So, uh, well, let me wait for the bar to go in. And I think we are live. So welcome everyone to our weekly series. Um, I'm Dalen, your host and the founder of Curious Core. We are a digital design school that teaches empathy, critical thinking, and creativity. And this week we have a special guest uh, once again, and Lillian, uh, he, she used to be the head of, uh, as a design lead at Google Maker Lab. And I met Lillian many years ago. Uh, <laughs> she uh, was someone who was transitioning to the field of user experience design back then. So I think uh, she has a very interesting story of how she transitioned. Uh, and she's been a freelancer at that period of time when I met her as well. And then she uh, have actually entered Google. But I will say Lillian also comes from a background of advertising, right? So she has actually uh, been an art director before, uh, has, has been very well-traveled and is true and true a maker, right? And she has created this uh, card game called Say What? Uh, and we'll speak a little bit about that. But today, welcome everyone. And uh, I'm very glad that you, you're able to join us uh, in this live session and we'll learn how she managed to break into this uh, industry as a mid-career switcher, but also join Google, which I'm sure all of you are curious to know, like how do you join one of the world's uh, most desirable organizations, tech organizations uh, with free food and all that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll get her to spill the secrets. So um, I, hope, I hope that's an okay introduction for you, Lillian. Yeah. Um, do you want to share a little bit more about, uh, you know, what do you do today um, as a freelancer once again, and, and what is a say what? Okay, uh, I, I think that I can uh, give a little bit of history for the rest of the people uh, before as today as freelancer, like how I break into the, you know, UX, uh, what happened is like all my life, I studied um, graphic design. Then when I joined several agencies, I was lucky when I was in Sachi and Sachi, my CEO during that time, he was very into digital. And during that time in Singapore, it's still very traditional, print ads, TVC. But this guy, he's awesome, super awesome, amazing. You know, um, He told us like, oh, you know, you, you need to look at FWA websites, you know, kind of things like, those websites that won awards or what is the new technology for new things, you know. So he encourages us to go and like, you know, uh, pick up like, you know, our learnings and everything. And we also have uh, planners, uh, strategic planners from like uh, New York, from uh, Amsterdam, like, you know, Widen and Kennedy, you heard before this uh, agency. And you have someone from internationally, you know, with great backgrounds and great projects under the belt coming to Singapore. And of course, you're being so inspired to work with them. And from there, it's like, you know, being curious, you see, you wanted to find out more. Even though my job is a graphic designer or art director during a time, I wanted to know more about strategy, you see, not just to learn like, you know, okay, I'm design or I'm going to make something beautiful. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to learn about like, you know, the business of uh, the client, the the concept behind each brand, everything. So that is the one that we all keep on building every year. I think a few of us will, will tell ourselves like, hey, we need to learn something new, <laughs> you know, because it's just because we are curious, you know, it's not because it's a must, you see, even learning new program software, we keep on doing something new. And after a while, uh, when I joined BBDO Singapore, I was super lucky because I was working um, with regional brands. So working with regional brands is uh, in a way like you get to travel a lot. You get to work on big brands and, 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 and brands like P&G, like Guinness, like, you know, Fonterra, and you get to travel to do brand hack. So that was great because not just understanding about the market of Singapore, when you go to different country to do brand hack, you will understand each of the market is so different. Everyone from the US will think that oh, Asians, <laughs> they are all the same, China, Japan, Korea, Singapore. But it's different. Even Indonesia is next to Singapore or Malaysia. The market, the way of like, you know, speaking to one another, you know, is totally different. So that is also part of it. Do you think it's UX? I think so too. It's psychology, you see. 
So after my trip and travel to Berlin and Amsterdam, meeting so many people, you know, with my uh, good friend, we traveled there, like a chef who's a photographer, you know, an artist who's actually like, you know, used to be, you know, one of the you know, best kind of like athlete, you know, a lot of people have double things like, you know, a real daytime job and a passion. So of course, that inspired me a lot that I came back and with a good job or so, I'm thinking to myself like, hmm, what should I do next with my life, you know? And not to say my life was in the midlife crisis, nothing at all. It was the perfect life. <laughs> so during that time, when I traveled to Berlin, I think so about 10 or 11 years ago, it was, I heard this term called UX design and mm. ideal human-centered design, you know, yeah. ideal. Yeah. And I was thinking like, what is that? You know, that curiosity led me to, you know, find out more about that thing. So in Singapore during that time, if I'm not mistaken, nine years ago or 10 years ago, they have UX in Singapore, but it was not big, you know. Mm. It's only software developer or very few, you know. Even, mm. even banks or companies didn't hire UX designers at all. Exactly. Okay. So that was the year I took sabbatical. I was supposed to take one year sabbatical, you know. Mm. And of course, like people think, oh, sabbatical is like eat, pray, love, you know. Oh, wow, so nice. You meet the love of your life. You travel to different country. No, <laughs> I did it with a purpose of learning new things and see what I can pick up because Singapore didn't have UX. So which country, you know, actually have these people that exist? So the first thing I did was like to travel to China, you see, <laughs> because China okay. is like, during that time, they already have WeChat and do online payment and everything. Mm. So I wanted to study about like how people use technology to do a lot of digitization, you see. Mm. And from there, it's like, you know, countries like Sweden, like, you know, Berlin, where, you know, they have UX designers and UI designers and customer service experience things, which I have not heard before at all. Yeah. Mm. So during that time, I met you, Dalen, you know, halfway through London because I wanted to look for, you know, any hackathon I can join for the tech, you know, yeah. industry yeah, in the I old street that. where Farringdon yeah. Old Street and Shoreditch is famous for all this, you know. Yeah, I remember I was working in tech then as a product manager with yeah. Aviva and then, yeah, because we have a London headquarter office. So, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. good to meet a fellow Singaporean. Yeah, yeah. And you brought in Matt as well, Matt Redby. You remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I remember that? Matt, hey, Matt yes. if you're watching this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so for, for that, you know, uh, it, it spurs me. But during that time, of course, I did freelance, you know. Mm. Uh, freelance jobs um, with Singapore clients, you know, with uh, ad agencies, but time difference, you know. And also, like, you know, while I, I, I was there, the secret is I... When I join a lot of hackathons, people can see that you can design or help their stuff. Mm. Not only the teams, because they have full-time job, you see, all these hackathon people. And yeah. also those people who organize these hackathons, they mm. are like, you know, they have their own business and their own startups. They ask me like, yeah. hey, would you like to design for us? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, why not? Yes, you know, kind of thing, money, mm. ka-ching, you know, mm. kind of stuff, designing for people and like, you know, then I told them like, hey, I want to learn about UX, but I don't have experience. And I read books, books, are, you know, there's a lot of books, you know, to read, but you know, which one is for me? And I know there's near Ariel and there's this, you know, Norman, you know, the books, are, you know, all these things. And these guys, you know, those Silicon Milk roundabout people and a bunch of them, they were so good. They actually gave me like context for people to speak to, books to read or events to go to with discount. Mm. Okay. So if I didn't quit my job to do the sabbatical during that time, I will not discover so many things. So of course, I came back to Singapore to freelance again for a few months, like four months or five months, and then back again. Um, then eventually, I went to sign up for GA. Mm. It was between Hyper Island in Sweden, Stockholm, or GA, you see, that during that time. So, so I think I miss out the, the, the hyper island so I took the GA one and mm. did some projects and which, which GA did you do? You did you did the general assembly boot camp in not in not boot camp, it was a few months, you know, and I need to go every night to to to, to the school, you know, I did up projects. Was it part time or was it full time? Uh it was part time. Oh so- Oh, wow. So back then the program, okay, that, that's many, many years ago. So it was, so you did it for a few months. Okay. A few months, yes. And we have like, you know, every small project and after that, the final big project, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> you have some group projects, you know, that you need yeah. to go and interview, you know. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. 
So of course, the first time, you know, when, when, when you're going there, like, you know, every time people think that, oh, you know, Asians are very quiet. But it turned out to be I'm the noisiest Asian guy in the class. <laughs> and they're very good friends, you know. And a lot of them, like, you know, some of them, they work for, you know, Guardian, you know, the newspaper. Mm. And of course, they wanted to do UX. So you were, you were, you were in London. Yes, you, yes. Were, you were in London and you were spending months over there. You were yes. trying to break into the industry. And, yes, and actually, going... at that time, in London, UX was already pretty mature. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. Berlin, London, Stockholm, you know, like Stockholm, like, you know, I, I went to like, you know, North Kingdom, this agency. And London, that time, that was. You, you worked for them? For, no, I, I just, just visited them. People, you okay, know, okay. And wow. in London, that time, I remember this agency which I met the people and I said, wow, this is so inspiring. Us too, have you? Yeah, us too. Yeah, they. Yes, they built, yes, and a tea house in the West Village, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And I was so lucky that one of my lecturers was actually working in us too. Wow. Yeah, you know, she was doing the fintech, you know. So she Holy told me, like, if you know that which industry pays you the most is actually fintech. <laughs> <laughs> fintech uh, for UX design, right? You're saying? Yes, yes, yeah, that yeah. is the, the that thing. is true. You know, that is you know, true. Everyone needs to use it. You know? It's something that people <laughs> need to use it. So I said, good. Then she said that yes, uh, if you are into game, UX also is good because people will still play game even during pandemic. You see, <laughs> exactly. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a big thing. So if you are game fintech things. So like so just to kind of like you know just slow slow things down a little bit. Um, what I'm picking up from what you you just shared is you know maintaining this attitude of curiosity of learning. Yes, things, yes. And yes. then the fact that you uh you you give time to yourself to just go learn right go yes, self develop yes. yourself yes, um, yes. and also learn from some of the best people. Yes, yes. But how how did you break into the industry? Like, who gave you your first UX gig? Like, I'm, oh, yeah. okay. Uh, the freelance UX gig. Okay, this I started freelance before full time. Okay, yeah. So it was in London, and all these guys they they are in the startup, so they have their own mm-hmm. tech company, and yeah. they asked me to do design for them, and I said that hey, I want to learn something. Because you were hanging around around hackathons so you were just yes. hanging out with all the tech people and then yes, they're like yes. oh and hey can you just come and help me like come come like help me out okay yes cool. yes but but even, you see, even if you're asian even if you're a minority they still see, just, but okay. but but i realized you see uh i realized that when i traveled to countries like you know in europe and all these countries it's so different from here that in, mm. in here sometimes you see that oh they are foreigners or they are what but in mm. there there's no such thing as whether where are you from it's just yeah, that's true for London. What what yeah, you London. are so in, interesting mm. is you yourself as an individual. You know, mm-hmm. I don't feel any like discrimination, none at all. You see, when mm-hmm. I was there, it's like I've met people from Iran, people from Nigeria, everything like in, including like Sweden, Stockholm, everything. You know, like mm. people are so open and people are, and and those people I spoke to, they know where mm. Singapore is, they know what what is famous for, they know everything about it. And that they, <laughs> they are just more interested into like, Ooh, what's your thinking behind something so the 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 first people who gave you projects were startup founders yes yes so so i of course they pay me too and and mm. they give me like okay uh this is like you know examples what we will do but it's an nda like you don't need to sign that yeah, you yeah. cannot share yeah. but for me to understand like oh okay i thought in school i was taught omni graphical during the time you know about mm. it was a long time oh, yeah, ago right before was, adobe xd before yeah. figma you know and they said exactly. no they're using sketch you know they started As, using Sketch was one of the first ones. That, yeah. yeah, and and Envision. So Envision yeah. was a simpler one. So Sketch is the more detailed one. Then I said, oh, but in school, they taught us this, you know. They said, don't worry, it's okay. But they said the most important thing is not uh, software. Software can learn yep. anytime. Exactly. They said it's about the thinking. You know, how you think and how you see. Yes. Yeah. So they said that forget about software. They said that... Um, I, I need to sketch up and show them like, you know, how certain things can be made easy. So of course, mm. it's like, you know, I, I, I have some time on weekend or like, you know, I'm not meeting people. I will do a lot of permutation, you know, mm. and show it to them. And these people are really making products, you know, and telling me like, okay, this is good. Actually, this is good. And this is like how we can improve. You I know, see. And, so you're getting a lot of feedback because you were doing freelance for these startups. Yes, nice. yes, yeah. yes. Like 
like I'll be doing social posts for them, but I'm also doing for, mm. for them basically because of the design, you know. Yeah, but yeah. of course, like, you know, they have their own in-house UX, they have their own in-house wow. uh, UI people, you know. But because I'm doing like, you know, designs for them for other things. This then, feels like your your martial arts training. It's like you you just you just kind of like done all these things and put in the work and like you did almost everything and then after that yeah. you build this foundation. Yes, yes. Yeah. And and I think that uh the most important attitude for this, I, I would tell everyone, okay, even though how much you know something, mm. you always need to be humble, okay? Or you need to have a thing to say that, oh, I didn't, I, I don't know about this, you know, teach me, you know, mm. you know, it, it's okay to not to know anything. Sometimes I know that, you know, when people tell me, oh, do you know that this uh, particular thing that is quite famous, I didn't know about this. I said, let me Google. Okay. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I don't pretend to say that, yes, I know it, you know, that actually I don't know, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's very important. Yeah, that, that makes people want to teach you more. And yeah. and after that, I was lucky when I came back uh, here mm. to Singapore. So, uh, Wait, I Wait, you sound like you had you had a lot of fun in London. Why do you come back? <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun, you know, kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> actually, a lot of things. And, and also, London is not uh, cheap. So, like, Shanghai, so it's yeah, more expensive yeah. than Singapore, the, the cost true. of living, you know. That is true. Thing, but, but of course, I felt that everyone should at least, uh, even though if you don't quit your job, you know, mm. I felt that if you can take three weeks off or one off, you just work for a tech company, if, even though it's free or so, you know, I know mm. that sometimes you say you need money, but I think that, you know, if they are willing to teach you, take mm. that as you're paying for a course, you see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Possibly. Like, like, Possibly. like some people sign up for a course, you know how expensive it is. It's mm. like high price and super expensive and like, you know, yeah. if some people taking like those like, you know, uh, INSEAD and everything. Imagine if someone said that, you know, they are from this uh, big company uh, teaching about AI, you know, or Tesla, exactly. you know, go for yeah. it, you know, or things yeah. just, just for three weeks and not being paid, you know, and to yeah. learn all these skills, you know. And, and I think it's pretty common in London to have unpaid internships or something like that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And and people are willing to teach, you know. So during that time, mm. I, I, I haven't met you, uh, Dylan, in, in Singapore when I keep asking about UX. No one wanted mm. to tell me about it, even though people who knows about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, okay, if I got competition, I want to tell people so I can get the job. Oh, like, oh. oh dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, during that time, you know. So, yeah. So anyway... So hmm. I came back, uh, a friend introduced me to work in this uh, design company that does Google hmm. work and they're based inside Google called Toaster. Oh, I was very okay. lucky and they're very good people you see inside there. They're very amazing people who does hmm. marketing design. Then I joined in them and also get to know some of those folks there, the, the engineers, the stuff, you know, the, hmm. the designers, the makers. And I thought, that, wow, that's nice. While well, uh, freelancing there, I got a job offer from this UX company called, product company called Brilliant Basics, mm. who is based in London, you know, and now they yeah. sell it to Accenture, I think so. Yeah, I heard of them, yeah. Then they said, okay, your first project will be Singtel Dash, you know. I was like, yeah, hey! Mm. <laughs> yeah, the you forgotten know? app. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> then then, then I, I get to work with uh, very good people, you know, like the, the head of uh, UX is based in London. He's uh, okay. uh, from, from Canada. And yeah. also like few UI people, you know, and yeah. even time differences. So and they sent me to London to get induction, to work with them, that's to see awesome. how the power of working, you know. So I came yeah. back and there's a lot of questions because I'm a noob, right? No matter how much you do it, how much you learn, it's different from working full time because you're always meeting the stakeholders, you know, every week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and of course, with the curiosity in mind also, every project that's dropped to me, I always do more research than what it's supposed to be. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's and that eventually ended up as a gig in Google. Like how how did how did the Google? Yeah, like I know was, you. There yeah, was someone that I worked with in yeah. uh in Toaster. Then he went to like you know set up this uh division in Nickelab, you know kind of stuff in in Google. Mm. So mm. then he asked like, hey, do you want to join? You know, so because he worked with me before, you know. Yeah. So that's why I always tell everyone it's like you know. Even if freelance or full time or anything, mm. do not burn bridges or do not be an asshole. Bridges, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just do your best, even though you felt that sometimes it's, it's, it's not your your style or not your thing, you know. But just you know, do your best, you know, kind of thing. And you know, if you think that that is the place not for you, yeah, you, know, you can just quit or you know, just just don't do it, you know. But never be be an asshole. You know? So. 
just to pause for a little bit, and, and for those of you who are just tuning in live on Facebook, uh, welcome to our weekly webinar. We have Lillian Lee, who is the former uh, design lead at Google Maker Lab. And I'm just uh, asking her how she managed to join Google after a sabbatical and after working freelance. And she's yeah. uh, mentioned a few quick tips, uh, including maintaining your curiosity, which yeah. uh, coincides with our company name. Yeah. And uh, the fact that you uh, try to do work on different projects and, and just kind of know different people. It seems like she, she has very good relationships with people and that they managed to introduce her to uh, the right opportunities and um, yeah. that's, that's part of the reason why she entered Google uh, and of course she put in puts in a lot of uh, hard work as well uh, yeah. and, and hard knocks yeah. I guess and, along the way yeah and and also like after that of course I joined it like you know always have this open mind of why not you know kind of things because I thought mm. that a, a lot of times when you think too much like whether should I do this or not you know mm. then you might be one year and two years and three years and I think about like during that time way before, so I keep on like, you know, uh, coaxing my friends to, to leave the traditional media and try yeah. something. So this is a very important point, which I'd like to maybe ask you from a psychological perspective, because mm -hmm. many people in the audience, right, we have a couple of people in the audience right now who's trying to break into the UX design yeah. industry. Yeah. And, you know, for you, I, I remember I recall you've been advertising for a while. Right, yeah. you're you're, yeah. you're considered very experienced already yeah. in advertising. So for you to give all that up and mm. and then like try something totally new, yeah. How how did that feel? Uh, I will tell you one thing. When I did that, quit my comfy job, and during that time, I was doing. You know, my boss is great. My work 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 mate are great. You know, my mm. projects are great, and. It was quite daunting and like, you know, I told myself I haven't done freelance in my life before during, before that, prior to that. Holy cow. All right. Yeah. And that was my first time writing invoices, you know, writing mm. to agencies or like, you know, business to offer my service. And a lot of things that is like, you know, first time in everything, you know, and, and because of that, I felt like, you know, a sense of like, you know, like, wow, you know, I didn't know I can do this, you know, because... Mm. Of course, everyone in the beginning will question themselves, like, do you think I'm good enough for this? Especially women, I'll tell you this, okay? <laughs> women will always like, you know, mm. like, you know, I think that if I do this, I will lose a lot of things. So I felt that during that time, uh, the most important thing also is the support of family. Yeah. My, my, my sisters, uh, parents and everyone, uh, auntie, uncle. Yeah, and yeah. also friends, you know? Like, yeah. because I, I'm like... surrounded by people who like, why not? If things does not work out well, just come back and get a full-time job. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And, and also, like, because if you're in the street for so long and you have a good portfolio mm. and you have a good relationship with people, you know, mm. you definitely know you will, can come back, you know. Even, even like freelance today, as so I got is because of people that I know before, I worked with before, they know my style of working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is how it did. So when I did, did that, I felt that, of course, it, I would be lying if I said that, oh, it's so easy. I just jump to it and do it. No, it was daunting. It, it was like from the day of like, you know, signing mm. up for a course in UX to, you know, do it, you know, be, becoming the good student that you paid for every single cent from my own pocket, not from skill to change anything, you know, and staying there, paying the rent and everything, you know. Yeah, that was an expensive one. Yeah, Yeah, you, you need to know that, you know, and, and buying food from, you know, Sainsbury. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I can definitely relate to that because I studied UX in New York and yeah. I actually paid for my own course, like stay in New York, stay yeah. in the hotel. And yes, this was yes. like many, many years ago. And it's like UX was like totally unknown. Yeah. Uh, then I was like just trying to understand how it works. Yeah. Yes, so I, yes. I, can, I can definitely relate to your experience. Yes, yes. So, but at the end of the day, I felt that, you know, when you look back now, you felt that, wow, actually I did not regret it, you know, <laughs> of doing that, you see, because I felt that it opens me to so much opportunity. And, and during that time, after Brilliant Basics, I came to work with like Maker Lab Google. So, yeah. you know, uh, and during that time also, I learned a lot of new things that I, I didn't think that I would be doing. I, I thought I would be doing UX mm. for a website. What does, what does Google Maker Lab do? Okay, like, uh, I, they, I'm, I'm also quite interested. Oh, so they are like under the marketing arm, you know, okay. to help uh, doing like, you know, uh, 
you know, sometimes internally we want to do something for marketing, you know, mm. and the product know, marketing team. Yeah, okay. sometimes there's agencies doing it. Sometimes internally you do it, right. you know. Sometimes certain things you want to have a, a brand hack or hack a product hackathon, you know. So mm. you know, be organizing it, and like also like you know, working with uh, the product team to how to come up with a campaign or something for people. Right. So that is a little bit in advertising, but for my side, it's also also during the time to learn how to. Like for websites like thing with Google, you know. Like, right. So you did touch a bit of the product, not the core products, but yes, the, no, 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 not yeah. the maps, everything, no, no. Yeah, but that is another uh, UX team, is it? Yeah, uh, that's in San Francisco. I remember. Yeah, yeah, and but also now they it, have, yeah, now they have a product product teams in Singapore. Yes, yeah. yes, and and they also doing like for apps mm. for India everything. So mm. what happened is like I was lucky during that time that uh, I was given projects uh by the pr- product comms team. To work mm. on like social media, I I told them you no know, social media is something that I only post out on my Instagram while I ate for lunch. What <laughs> 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 the things they said? Do you want to work on this project? You know, for Google Solitaire. Then I was like, okay, why not? Um, what what is that about? Send it uh, a a package. You know, it's like the journey from you know creating the product, sending it to mm. influencers, from unboxing to talking about it to sharing. On that it. is UX itself, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yeah. how 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 the first thing you make it, how you send it, how someone open it, you know the feeling of looking at something. The unboxing experience. Yes, yes, and also the, you know, like Google won't be selling like okay, hi, look at our Google Maps today. No, this is not you know. So yeah, they want Google's experiences. Way. So hmm. I did that, you know. Then with a couple of other people, then eventually there are more projects interesting like get fit with Google, you know, like um hmm. they they have like you know mindfulness into the app into the the the, the Google Pixel itself. So they wanted people to like you know how hmm. to know about all so a lot of content pieces for yes content pieces. So I learned hmm. about that. Learn about like you know um influencers or YouTubers and which one is right for which kind of like product, you know, kind of thing. You, you cannot get that like, simply any something Harry to do something. Yeah. So the right uh target audience, the right people. So all these things I like hmm. I have not done before, you know, in my life. So what what was it like to work for Google? I mean you you've been freelancing, you've been working for advertising agencies. Yeah, yeah. Almost your entire career. Like how how did it feel like to work in a tech company? I, I think work I sometimes I felt like wow everyone is so smart you know <laughs> I felt stupid <laughs> because our feeling stupid is the best thing. Well, because you're not the smartest person in the room. That that's uh something right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's good to be feeling the most stupid person. Sometimes I felt so stupid that I felt like oh did I do something wrong or like things like that. So, but I have very good workmates and our seniors and everyone that uh who's very patient and very good in guiding. You know, mm. and I felt that there are many times when I sometimes I did mistakes, you see. But of mm. course, I don't count my mistake as usual because I'm a straightforward person. I tell people, "Oh, so sorry," or oh, "Sorry, I forgot about the meeting." You know that that actually happened to me recently. So, all right, and I said, "Shit," you know, kind of thing. I I won't say that. Oh, because my laptop is not working, or because I had something. Yeah. Else. Then, like, <laughs> I forgot. I totally forgot. It's my fault. It's my problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair so, enough. but at the end of the day, I felt that um. Uh, People always talk about free food and stuff, but I will tell you the truth. It's about working on projects that is so meaningful. Mm. You know, I felt that's important. Not to say I'm Mother Teresa or like you know Dalai Lama, but I felt that you know you felt that you're doing something that actually helps someone. You know, mm. or I felt that my my portfolio I can add something there. Also, that I felt that mm. wow, and there's a lot of times I had challenges, but I felt that in the beginning it's like what. Are you sure you want me to do that in this particular time? Do I think I can do it? But because of the situation, I need to find a, a solution for every problem. Being resourceful, yeah. I think I learned something. You know? So every project, I always have something new to learn. And I tell myself, "Wow, I didn't know I can do this." You know, production to you know, like I I I never done logistic before in my life. Okay. Who does logistic? Is it to coordinate logistics so that everything can be sent to different country and reach to influencer? I did yeah. that, and that was a good opportunity because some company was saying that okay, I will just write someone who has done before to do it. But no, they they let me do it. You see, someone who has not done it before. So the <laughs> oh right, so you even handled the op- operations management. Yes, yes, and and I one time I asked, designer. oh, where can can I learn about project management? You know. Oh, and they just let you go. go yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave me something, you know, and of course, someone is overlooking it, you know. And I was like, oh my god, you know, I'm doing all this, or like speaking to different countries. So there's a lot of things I felt that not just 
working in 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 the collab Google or like you know any big name company like you know mm. uh, BBDO or anything, I felt that the most important thing I learned when I look back is about the willingness to say why not. Mm. You know, if people throw me in the deep shit like you know gutter or anything, I will always say, hmm, maybe that's a good thing to learn from this. You know, yeah, yeah that's, that's always a pony in the pile. Yes, yes. Oh, I, I, yeah. I won't be sitting down there, yeah, this one now, so bad. No? Then every day binging about the same thing. But I say that, okay, I'll make the best of it. If you throw me in the long kang, I'll make the best brilliant long kang, no? the most shiniest long kang you know, that you okay. can find. That's, that's amazing. So thanks for sharing on your Google journey and how it is. Yeah. Uh, now, now I see you're back, right? So you're back in, into being a freelancer and you're, you're now... You're, you're now in this COVID situation, like all of us are. Mm. Um, how, how has it been, you know, trying to, uh, you know, freelance in this kind of economy climate? And, and you, I also understand you run a, a small business now, like trying to, to sell the cards. Uh, so, yeah, you can share a little bit. What, what are your thoughts right now? Okay. Uh, I I I won't try. I I won't be trying to paint a very like you know picture like you know wow mm. you know it's okay. I still have freelance job. It's COVID nineteen. You know kind of thing. I will tell you, there's a lot of people doesn't have any job. And if you are busy or if you have something during now, count yourself super lucky. Okay, super super lucky. If you can order a grab food also with the extra five dollars charge to it, you are super rich. Okay. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, anyone got food panda kind of things? Yeah. Um, for me, when uh, in you see, in the beginning of the year, like end of last year, everything was super high for me. Like uh, I traveled mm. to Korea because of an illustration uh, festival for say what to promote mm. same cards. Then this year in April, supposed to go to Shanghai for Shanghai Art Book Fair. Mm. Then Jakarta for another market, you know, kind of thing mm. to to mm. expand. You know, say what rather than just in Singapore because last year. During last year, we managed to expand to a lot of retail outlets in Malaysia and also in Indonesia. Yeah. So what happened this year was that's all planned. So when January came, everything just kept tumbling down. And especially when we have retailers owing us money for say what card game. And mm. also like recently, Gallery & Co. closed down. They just yeah. went for liquidation without okay. telling us anything. Mm. All this have an impact, you see, like because our card games always, uh, our biggest, biggest, biggest customer is actually tourists who come to Singapore. Mm who visited mm. all these retailers who's very, like, you know, things, and to bring yeah. back a piece, you know, and some of them, yeah. like, you know, to say, wow, learning languages in a fun manner by playing card games, you know. Mm. So, of course, when that situation happened in January, I cannot be sitting here and waiting, like, oh, why, you know, the retailers, you know. Uh, so, or poor me. <laughs> yeah, poor me. So, I've been doing yeah. a lot of things online, like, trying to sell things online or, like, giving discount or giving promotion uh, collaborating mm. with another like you know uh, influencer another brand you know like keep yeah. things going up you know kind of thing cannot yeah. stop it yeah and on the freelance thing of course like you know as usual you know you need money to live to survive everything the survival instinct kick in so yeah. I've been asking people like hey you know uh, do you have any freelance you know or like any yeah, jobs yeah. Or anything I keep on asking people around yeah and yeah. sure someone will know someone who needs some kind of help then you just so it's just there. hustling it's just kind yes, of reaching yes. out to people you know yes. and just asking yes. for work okay. yes yes and and you don't need to be like you know being shy saying that oh I, what people think of me or like do you think mm. that I, I, I I'm like very needy or stuff just ask people hey you know kind of thing I'm available for freelance right on LinkedIn mm. Right mm. on your your Facebook page, you know Instagram, anything, or ask friends like, hey, do do you know anyone looking for this? Yeah. You know, and and like now sometimes also like my cousin is setting up a dental uh, clinic. You know, she asked me to design her branding, everything. You know, so okay. yeah, all this kind of things. So anything or so you see. So so don't put yourself in high horse like you know. Oh, I used to design for this big brand or stuff. Like why am I doing this for you? No, you know, mm -hmm. and, and staying don't, humble. Stay yeah. humble, any brand, no, including like, you know, Lap Chong brand or so, if you want, you know, the guy, just brand. do it. Who knows? Maybe you can do a very nice Lap Chong branding, like, you know, the Levy brothers, they did the Ota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice, right? You know, who knows? Lap Chong can be fashionable. So, yeah. Just do it. Yeah, know. just take it. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I guess it's also hit you hard. So, your, I, I think your income has been affected as well. Yeah, and, of course. and from what you mentioned. So, 
any any tips or advice? Because we have some freelance uh, designers over here, and some mm. people also not being able to get a job because of the the current situation. There's not mm. not enough jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what what what? How do you stay strong? Right? How do you stay positive? Yes. Uh. Okay. First of all, surround yourself with people again. The right people. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, the right people. Not to say the people who give you jobs. The people who how they think and how they like you know resilient. You know, mm. because think about it. You no, know, we are very lucky compared to our grandparents who went to war, went to pandemics, went to everything. You know, mm. went to yes. flood, went to like you know what kind yeah. of things. You know? Whatever yeah. yeah. So ours is actually is like we still have a roof on top. You know, there's no one shooting us from the back or stuff like that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, um, it's not life and death situation. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, and for freelancers and any designers, my thing is like there's a lot of platforms like you know. Uh, like in Singapore, even though there's like freelance network, you know, like Facebook, and there's mm. I think popping up a lot like Chance Upon dot co. If you can check it out, you know, mm. that mm. they they link you with the right clients or a product design company, you know. Mm. So Chance Upon dot co. Yeah, or, I will put it in the webinar. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's like you know, uh, sometimes there's like uh people from Super Beast, you know, kind of thing. Mm. Uh. They, they will connect you with uh, clients directly or so and they'll mm. be the middle person so they can work with them and mm. of course there are like you know uh, PM or traffic of different ad agencies where you can contact them you know kind of stuff you just ask them like hey can you give me the contact of this traffic can you give me a contact of this PM can you just write if they don't you reply say you say PM is like the project manager yes if they don't mm. reply you maybe they're too busy mm. don't, don't sit there and think that something is wrong with you or like you know and just sitting down there, you need to continue moving. You so know? I think the, the the difference is over here, like you have to hustle more. You have to like do more sales in yes, some Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And, and also like, you know, of course, before you do this, make sure you have a good portfolio to put in. Like, you mm. know, people ask you like, hey, uh, can you show me your work? And you scramble to find all your things or students' work, you know. It's, it's yeah, hard, you know? At, at least, you know, you have a good one to show them and, you know, being confident of what kind of project you can do, you know. And also, don't lie, you know. People say that, oh, can you do UI? You say, yes, I can do UX, UI. But actually, you can't. You just can do design, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And you download things from Shutterstock as the UI. You thought the buttons can do it. But no, don't okay. do that, okay? After yeah. a while... Just be honest. Okay. About you, the words will travel very fast, you see. Yeah. Mm. So, okay. So, I think, like, not, not to say just hustle, just being, like, hungry, you know. And, mm. and, like, you know, to get as much as possible. Ask around. Just ask. Okay. I think that's good advice uh, in general, just to have. Can I ask, you know, if in Google, right, uh, when you're hire designers, how, you know, how strict is the portfolio? I'm sure a lot of designers want to work over there, right? Like, yeah, I think, you know, and, and I'm sure you've seen your fair share of portfolios being submitted as part of the. No, the I think that uh, at, at, at attitude and the, your work proficiency, that portfolio, you need to have a portfolio. It, it doesn't need to be award winning, but I felt that your portfolio and also your attitude. Because mm. I, at the end of the day, no matter how talented you are, if your attitude is bad or sucks or mm. you think highly of yourself, you can't work with other people, you can't collaborate. So that will be a problem. Mm. So mm, that's important, and sure. also that 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 you know just, just stay humble and and you know being curious and everything. Like I think mm. everywhere. So even though if you want to tell me you know, work for Elon Musk in building a rocket, you you need to have a good portfolio that you built something that really managed to go. You know you cannot yeah. say that. So something real. Something real, and and you cannot just just tell people like oh I done this and done that. Then people sometimes. Mm. You know, we'll check and ask you questions like how how do you design this? You know, and exactly if you didn't design it, you can't answer it or you try to give mm. kind of like you know. Yeah, tr- trying to put wool over their eyes. <laughs> yeah, like like sometimes when I interview people, like you know, they say that they done UX. Then I said, okay, show me about certain things, and they show wireframing and some sketches. Then I said that, but what what is it got to do? This wireframing got to do with this product that you're working on? To tell me more mm. about it, you know. And they cannot mm. answer, then you realize, like, you know, did they really do that product? Or did right. they got or it did from they even product? have a rationale? Yeah, yes, or did they copy yes, from yes. someone else? You're right. Yes, there's like the onboarding of a new app, a mobile. So mm. sometimes you question, like, you know, why didn't you do a swipe, you know, kind of thing, yeah. like, you know, kind of stuff? And why do you do this? And if mm. they can't answer, you realize, like, do you really do this? <laughs> you know, kind or, do of you, thing? or do you even think through it? <laughs> yes, yes. Or like, you yeah. know, why why is your website doesn't have a hamburger? You know, uh, mm. of course you mm. would have a reason for it. Everyone have reason. Some people hate the hamburger. Some people felt yeah. that it's the best yeah. thing. 
yeah. But yeah. if you can't answer it or like certain things, then people will question more, you see, of like, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's actually one of the biggest problems. I was speaking to Jay from uh, Grab. Uh, he's one of the visual design leads over there. And he was telling me sometimes when he gets his candidates uh, in a room and they say, let's solve a problem together. Let's just kind of draw on the whiteboard. People start to get very, very nervous. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. I, I think I think it could be some people they need time. You see, there are two types of people. Some mm. that you see collaboration everywhere, including brand hack hackathons. Some yeah. people they like to sit down and not say anything and they write down and they have someone to trans transfer their thoughts for, you know, in, mm. in a presentation. But some people will jump up there and straight away they will say, Okay, why not this, why not that? You know, right. There are a few types of people. So you must see who you're working with. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So what kind of designer are you then? <laughs> I think that until now, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, when I reach 50 years old, whether should I do design or should I do farming, you see? So <laughs> you oh, can think, okay. I'm, I'm thinking really, you know, what I'm going to do 50 years old, what am I going to do when I'm 65 years old, what am I going to do? Because I don't want to be the old fella who is sitting on the things like, you know, mm, okay, enjoying. They said retirement is just like watching TV. I don't want to know. I want to die when I'm working, you see? Like that, yeah, like that's it. great. I mean, you found something you love doing. You do, you've done it for decades. Yeah, um, yeah. But I was just wondering, because you mentioned two examples, right? There are designers that need to think through things, like yeah. just write on paper, and maybe they're not so eloquent. Yes. And then there are designers who are like very extroverted and they yeah, just like yeah. get out on the board and draw. So yes. what kind, which, which one are you? I think I'm in between two of them, you see. Okay, so MB. Yeah, Every, everyone thinks that I'm extrovert, like, you know, my family thinks I'm an extrovert, even though I do the, all the tests, so ENTJ, everything. But I felt mm. that I like to be alone. So that mm. is so different, you see. Okay. Like, so, Lydian, we have our first question from the yeah. Zoom uh, crowd. Uh, Dick from the audience asked, uh, thank you. And he asked that, you know, understanding that we should not let our ego get in the way of potential opportunities mm. and that we have to consider our career. So how, do, how can we tell whether a project how, how can we differentiate between the good and bad in random Chong projects how do, how do you okay. tell whether this project is worth doing I okay after a lot of experience doing it you really know that you know whether someone wanted to pull a quick one like they wanted mm. to very cheap you know as yeah. like fiber price you know but yeah. if you understand your price you know your your worth and you can do very good design and someone say oh can you give me this one but someone giving me this cheap one you know kind of stuff so you need to question yourself because if you were to give in to you know cheap requests, you, you will be marketed as a cheap you know, a cheap designer, cheap designer and you'll be attracting more cheap clients. Yes, and, and also yeah. like you know, your industry or so everyone will thinking like, oh my god, this is a cheap designer, we should outcast this person, you see. You know what oh I mean? Dear. Because you will okay. spoil the whole market, you know. Mm. Uh, I must say that there are Lap Chong companies that actually are good companies because like like example, my cousin, I call her Lap Chong Company, her dental clinic, right? <laughs> because it's not a big corporation, no? not, not Glen Eagles. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. She understand when I tell her, it's like, please don't put so many words on it. Take it out. Then I say, oh, your reception, you know, can you please, you know, keep it simple, you know, kind of stuff like your name card. Why do you want to put the, you know, the, the, you know, the kind of like, you know, in the past, they have this kind of thing like, you know, you, mm. the, the next appointment date. I say, who want to put, appointment on your name card you know hmm. they say oh old people they like this you know they don't like the check on the email or people call them they like to have the cards you know i said that's yes that's understanding there's a ux understanding of old people also right but why not you create an extra card that is just for appointment but not your name card imagine you go to a convention you know all the hmm. like professional hmm. den dentists you know and hmm. your appointment behind your name card <laughs> okay Interesting. Yeah. 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 That's a that's a good thought. Dick, did we answer your question? I'm not sure. Like yeah. how how do you tell? Uh I, I guess I can also answer a little bit. Like yes. uh, I definitely agree with Lydian's viewpoint. Um yeah. and uh, telling good projects is really just a matter of I, I think chemistry with the person. It's not so much sometimes it's not even on the price that the person is offering, right? If I feel like the opportunity is really great as well. Uh, I'll actually take it. Like for example, um, I train for corporates and I train for schools. Uh, schools don't pay the best, to be honest, like per, on a per hour basis. But schools help me to, 
you know, uh, gain credibility as a as a trainer. It also, they also exposed me to other opportunities, like uh, to other groups of people that I don't uh, usually like hang out with. Mm. So I think it's not just considering the monetary benefits, but also the people that you get to work with and you get to learn from. Yep. So I'm not sure if we answered your question, Dick. Yeah. And also, I think it's the gut feeling because you know why? Mm, intuition. If the more you work in the industry or any industry that you're in, you, you can, in a meeting room, you can see out whether a person is trying to pull a quick one, you know? And mm. during that time, you know, there are a few situations you can do. It's like being polite and excuse yourself and say that, okay, uh, maybe this project, you can give it to someone, you know, kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm busy, right? Or charge more money, purposely charge more money. Yes. If yes, you don't like it. it. Because <laughs> I, I had one situation which is quite quite embarrassing to, to speak about this. Like, uh, mm. supposed to be a startup asking me to help to design a logo, branding for them. I They have the internal design, so... So I went there to present, you know, and normally when you present a you know logo, you present with the color scheme, the logos, everything. Yeah. So one of the partner was a super rude person. Mm. Okay. And like, you know, uh, why are you showing me this? You know, can you now do it the changes now and put it up together? But it is presentation, it's not, you know, for me to get feedback so that I can, you know, think about mm. it. But mm-hmm. she wanted it on the spot to do it, and she brought in her designer. Mm. and ask him why not you try it now you know kind of stuff like that is disrespectful to to someone that you engage the design and yeah and know, not, not listening really, right yeah not and things mm. like that so i said okay cool thank you for your time you know kind of stuff you know i will digest this and how then she said yes i want to have this and this and this you know but the other partner is a nice guy but this is this lady so what i did was like i excuse myself say thank you so I went home. You know, some people get angry saying that why this person is so rude and everything. Mm-hmm. I did not do that. I just sit down, digest it. And I dropped an email saying that uh, I will excuse myself from uh, handling this, you know, and I will stop doing this thing because I felt that it needs mutual respect. Mm. Yes. So, I, and I felt mm. that, you know, uh, what your partner did was actually uh, disrespectful. very disrespectful and if yeah. you have a designer to do it you should ask the designer to do everything why do you engage me you know kind of stuff mm. so it's not an angry email it's just a being very honest you know mm. and I said that's, that you know right. if you want the files that I presented before including colors fonts and everything you need to pay for my work until then if not I won't release anything you know so mm. thank you for the opportunity so I just so boundaries, right? Having yes. boundaries. Yes, you need to set that because I felt mm. that if you want to be a doormat and let people step over, mm. you'll be doing it for the rest of your life, you see. So you need mm. to know your worth. So I did that, you know. So eventually the guy said, oh, uh, can I have the files, you know? Uh, I'll pay you until then. I said, okay, pay me and I'll release it, you know. So I release and I move on with other projects. I'm not going to sit down here and thinking like, why this person is so rude to me? Because I felt mm. that my energy is not going to spend on that, you know. Yeah. And the whole world doesn't care whether... I'm earning that money or not, you know, kind of thing. It's just yeah. this situation taught me something to know that, you know, okay, choose your client wisely. And mm-hmm. some people do have this thing, this this special talent uh, called gut feeling. If you have a gut feeling about a project, about a person, about anything, trust it, okay? Yes, I call it intuition. Practice. Yes, yes, <laughs> intuition. You just need to trust it. You see, if that, okay, this thing is not, yeah. I think it sounds a bit dodgy, trust okay. it or do, you know, the website you can go and find out about Glassdoor about anything about this person yeah I, I yeah I think it just takes time and actually in business it's even more important to have to refine uh, this people's skill to be able to tell whether someone is really yes. what they say yes, um, yes. so yes. Bryce is asking you know um, you know would you recommend a designer to work with a ad agency for experience or should they just freelance and hustle for experience uh i will tell you honestly uh everyone should work with a good agency with a good mentor even though you're in a good agency but your senior or your mentor is not good you won't learn anything if you Mm -hmm. you know you need to start from somewhere um unless you're super 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 talented you're like an influencer you yeah. know, a design influencer. So maybe it's there. Design influencer. But, I don't know whether there's such. I mean, there are, but but then it's like they have been in the industry for very long. <laughs> yeah, but some people they are just super talented. They come out, they painting on the walls of Facebook, and suddenly they got shares, and suddenly they start their own business, painting more walls. You know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. 
But I felt that I was lucky to learn from people. You need to know all the processes because I did learn from very good PM, traffic, you know, uh, art directors, creative directors, you know. And during my time when I learned from the seniors, the seniors, I'm so lucky because the seniors actually learned from this famous guy called Dave Droga. Oh, David Droga. Wow. He used Droga to work five. in Singapore in Sachi Sachi. I did not know that. a very young city. And those, my seniors, were the ones who worked under him. And wow. yeah. And, and you see the quality of work, like, you know, their thing was like to think of 40 ideas for every single brief. Mm. So you think about that being practiced, you see. So I learned through with all these great people and that is the experience I learned. So when, when I come to any projects, anything, I know that what's the next step I need to do because of all the processes is how good it is, you see. Yeah. Right. Do that. Take two yeah. years. You, even though how tough it is, you know, you, you, you learn, but make sure you get a very good mentor, but be a nice person mm. to your mentor too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it goes both ways. So it sounds like it's, it's about finding a good team. Yeah, it's about yeah. finding good people, yeah. surrounding yourself with good people that you can yeah. learn from and work with, uh, which yeah. is great. And uh, we, we can take one or two more questions if you want. And uh, from the team, thanks for your question, Bryce and also Dick. So um, in general, if you were to kind of like you know, share advice because you, you, you've done this for several years now. So just kind of passing on, you know, any advice to younger designers uh, right now? Okay, I, I thought that uh, younger designers, if you just graduate, uh, please uh, go to a small design shop or company, anything, you know, but, you know, uh, go to a place where you can learn, you know, mm. learn any skills that you really wanted to learn. And even the things that are not taught in school, I felt that a lot of things, for me, my experience is not taught in school, it's taught in while working, you know? Yeah. And also, uh, young designers, please read a lot. Because it's not just about design, it's about pop culture, general knowledge, you know? When, when you meet someone, you see, at an event, you know, they are not just going to talk about like, hey, do you know that kerning is like that or the leading? You, know, the <laughs> you talk about like, hey, what, what, what do you think about the, the, the situation now in Africa, you know, where the... China is building okay, the things, so be well things about happening in real life, you see, or about about music you want to talk about, you know, kind of stuff like what's the latest mm. kind of like, you know, BTS, even though I'm not a BTS fan, okay, I, okay. I, I learned about who they are, what, what kind of songs and, you know, how far they come, you know, things like that, you see. So even when you're doing designs or so, yeah. it shouldn't be just about color, shapes and everything. I will always do research onto the thing that I'm designing. Mm. And I always look at like, you know, why is this product, not just from a beautiful design point of view, but from a consumer or user perspective, you see, like if I were to buy this or if I were to get this, what kind of feeling do I want to have, you know? Mm, right. So in general, I think what I hear you say is that uh, to be well-read yes. and to... Yeah, sorry, what would what would the other one or two things I think I missed out? Yeah, well read, you know, expose yourself to things that mm. even though you are not interested in, like, you know, like okay, mm -hmm. like example, you know, uh maybe I'm not interest in, in interested in like, you know, embalment. Okay. Okay. But I will read about embalment is there's an article, you know, to know like wow, this is mm. interesting, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Mm. So that next time if you got a job about something like, you know, embalment or something that is, you know, related to some certain things, then you can have like, yes, I read from this article, it says something like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, two more questions actually. Yeah. Uh, so one from Bryce. Uh Bryce yeah. is asking, what if you look for your mentor as a freelancer? Can you can you actually There's actually have... no mentor, no? Yeah, I can tell you it's like freelancers, work alone, right? people who work to freelancers, yeah. yeah. But but of course there's no mentor. It's it's just like if, if you if you want to start your career as a freelancer, I think my advice is no. Just mm -hmm. take a full time first. Mm. Equip yourself with all the experience, you know, then before, mm. before you become freelancer. So if, when you become a freelancer after all this experience, there's no mentor. Then what happens is that I'll do is like I ask friends who are freelancers. Like, hey, mm. how do you do this? Or Google, like, how to charge, you know, by time mm. or certain things. Mm -hmm. What's your worth or stuff like that. Read a lot or ask around mm. in the industry. I happen to be writing a book about it. But anyway. But on, on freelancers, is it? Uh, on how to run a small, medium business as yeah. a creative professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I tell you, yeah. Because because sometimes you're creative, you have a grandiose kind of, like, you know, imagination. But when it comes to money and charging, it's a different thing. So you need a, a, a very, you know, business-minded, like, 
you don't overspend, you know, yeah. what you can earn. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I, I think that's good advice. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, Bryce, I actually agree with Olivian. Um, some of the best people I work with are not freelancers. <laughs> It yeah. just so happened, uh, and actually they are in all these big organizations because the organizations provide stability and, and that um, that they also just want to work with a great people and great team. Yeah. So that's why they are there and they're really, really, really very good people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Gladys is saying, if I may add, when you work with an established agency, you not only learn skills and knowledge that directly impacts your work, but you also gain people's skills as well. Which Yes, yes, it's, it's true. So because uh, I will tell you this honest thing, okay? Mm. It's not just about work and design. You need to manage people's expectation. Mm. And people always ask me like, hey, how is this new company, a new agency? I, I'll tell you one thing. It's a being honest. Like everywhere there's politics. Yeah. Okay. But you just need to focus on what you're good at and do, and if you can avoid the daggers, you know, like like this, you know, exactly. and don't exactly. don't don't involve yourself into like you know, uh, you know, kepochi stuff like, You know what I'm saying, like you know, just, just do your work. Yeah. Gossips like hey, you yeah. know, you know, kind of stuff. If you spend so much time doing that, I think you can create a good campaign, you know, <laughs> or create a book <laughs> by then. Okay, so actually, this leads to my last question for you. I hope I I'll be answer your question, Bryce. So um. Because you do side hustles, even when you were working for Google, you're doing side hustles. I want to understand the importance of side hustle because you, you sound very passionate. Like you've been in this industry for very long, but you're still like so passionate about the industry. Okay, it's, it's not a side hustle. It's just like, you know, sometimes you, you know, I, I did that say what is because from that ideal human-centered design it was a brief that year to do something for the community. So of course, few, few things like, you know, food wastage, you know, mm. uh, helping the elderly, you know. Yeah. Uh, then about like, you know, uh, recycling products, you know. But like, what's the importance of doing all these things? Yeah, yeah. The, the thing I can tell you during that time is like, you know, work is work, you know. But mm -hmm. what do you have other hobbies? Don't tell me it's like going to cafe and, and drink coffee. Because mm. there are people who took pictures of each cafe they do, they become cafe influencer, you know. Then it become a <laughs> hobby, become passion and become a job, you see, kind of thing. Yeah. So that that one when I did say what so because I really believe in in languages learning languages in a fun manner you yeah. know and I thought that you know just taking my savings and and make it into into a, like you know a project you know and maybe sell it you know in in markets and they didn't know that you know people will really buy it until mm. retailers was contacting uh, us to place it into their their retail retail market and like you know uh, Every month there's sales, you know. So I felt that wow, there is something going on with this uh, Cantonese card game that we created, Hokkien, Singlish, you know, and other languages, and collaborated with illustrators, local illustrators, and also like you nice. know, language teacher, like a Korean language teacher. So I felt that during during that side hustle, I don't call it side hustle, it's more of a passion project, you know, very yeah, passion project. Business, mm. I felt I I learned so much, you know. I learned about printing cards in China, which part of China, and what kind of like gram grammage or what kind of things, you know, what kind of like, you know, uh, specs of a card game. And I, I learned how to write to retailers uh, chasing for money, invoices and everything, <laughs> oh, or, or delivery orders, uh, yeah. sales report, you know, things I never learned before in my design life, okay? Career. Mm. I, I learned about like how to produce the best sticker in which country from Taiwan, you know, washi tape, where Japan makes the same quality, but Taiwan actually makes quality, but cheaper. China, quality is not good and cheaper, you know, kind of stuff. So you did a lot of things and opening up like pop-up uh, 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 markets in like uh, Taipei, in Korea, in Malaysia, you know. You, you see, you talk to the customers and I realized like, wow, I didn't have the chance. This is a really true UX, you know, by speaking to people who's buying your product, you know. And telling you like, hey, I bought your product twice, you know. Do you have this language, no haka? Ah, <laughs> things, you know. Well, yeah. that's that's awesome. So it, it sounds like that helps you learn a lot of new things. A lot, a lot of new things. Things and that also I... kind of uh, revitalizes you in some ways because you're yes, yes. So you. so you think yeah. about this, okay? But I want this passion project. Actually, it leads me back to help me in my real uh, career. So like, if people ask me like, hey, 
do you know where to print certain things? So I'll tell them like, yes, this, I know where to get this. I know where to print this. Or I know where to... And then like, you earn extra karma points with people. <laughs> yes, yes. You, because you yeah. are the walking black book, you see, or people ask you like, hey, yeah. uh, I heard that, you know, uh, sending logistics to countries. Mm. Can you tell me how is it? Okay, India is the toughest to send. You thought that Japan mm. it is, you know. And mm. which country will custom who stop your stuff and food and like medicine you cannot send through here. So because of all this experience, you know, you're doing with logistics and your products, right? You know? Yeah. And also like, you know, having a mini warehouse to put my stuff, uh, drop shipping and stuff like that. You know, so these kind of things that drop shipping, what is that you know, in the beginning? If I don't do this, I won't know yeah, at all. Exactly. So, so you all this, yeah. Well, Lillian, uh, we're kind of running out of time. Uh, mm. It's really been a pleasure speaking to you and, and asking you questions. I hope uh, all of you managed to ask your questions. Um, mm -mm. If I could get your a favor from everyone who's in the Zoom, if you can just take some a couple of minutes to fill in the feedback survey for this evening because we are all UX practitioners. I'm collecting feedback to improve the webinar as well. Mm. Um, and Lily, if you want to stay for a couple of minutes, feel free to. I'm going to cover what we're uh, some of our events next week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before before we all finish, can I tell mm. you one of thing? Of course. Please? Yes, please. I'm not sure. Some some of you might not believe it, but uh, if you all can, you know, whether it's mindfulness or meditation, do something about that because I felt that uh, whether COVID-19 is not here, so sometimes you have problems at work, sometimes with people. Take some time, like five minutes to meditate or if you don't call it meditate, call it like don't do anything, not thinking about anything, which is the hardest. Yeah. You see, a pause or just breathe or you can hide in the toilet, you know, in the, on the toilet bowl sitting, just do nothing at all. Just mm. blank, you know, empty, you know, it helps a lot actually, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, uh, definitely encourage uh, spending time to look inside and look inward. Uh, that's that's awesome advice, Lillian. Mm. Uh, you are one of the most positive, creative person I have met, Lillian. Thanks oh, thank for you. being raw. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, just to share a, a little bit about... Oh, I just realized like the cursor disappears when I present. Okay. So just to share a little bit, uh, this event was created because of uh, COVID and there were a lack of uh, UX events right because covid sort of uh, caused this uh, surprise and people stopped running ux events so i decided to run this event if you actually enjoy uh, the session today feel free to uh, take some screenshots feel free to share your thoughts your learnings uh, with others and use the hashtag leading into change uh, i'll definitely reach out to you and uh, you know give you a gift or something uh, so one of the gifts could be a career guide if you're looking to break into the industry and we, as a, as a result, I always, uh, I've, I've been running a lot of workshops as well uh, to help others. So uh, if you are interested to find out more about the user experience design industry and just want to know what user experience is, I run uh, the standard one and a half hour workshops, which I use to conduct for General Assembly. Uh, the next one's happening on 7 September and it's 8 to 9.30 p.m. Right. So if you're already on the list, uh, there's no need to do anything. You'll, you'll receive emails from us anyway. It's the same uh, webinar link. But if you haven't, uh, feel free to go to our website and sign up for uh, the workshop. And for next week, uh, this was a surprise because someone from the United Nations reached out to me uh, and he happens to be a UX designer. <laughs> and very randomly, he reached out to me uh, on Facebook and we had, a, we had a few chats and I was asking him about his work. He's originally from America. His name is Nicholas. So next week, uh, we'll be getting Nicholas, um, who's actually based in Bangkok, to speak about his projects and his work uh, at the United Nations as a UX designer. Well, I didn't know a, a UX designer was here in, in Asia, hidden among us. <laughs> so uh, he's uh, going to come and speak uh, to all of us. So feel free to um, participate and, and join us next Wednesday. And last of all, we are open to uh, our batch in October 2020 for the coaching program. Uh, this is a very different program. As you hear from what Lillian is saying, work experience is important uh, and putting yourself with a company of good people is important as well. So I've curated and I've designed this program. Uh, the first batch is actually about to graduate. Uh, so two out of the six people who are in the first batch has already got a job as a UX designer before they graduated. So I think that's, that's awesome. Um, currently also monitoring the progress of the rest. 
So if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me and uh, speak to me and happy to answer any career questions that you have. And if you're not on the list yet, uh, if you're just kind of tuning in live, uh, feel free to get on the list on curiouscall.com. Uh, uh, unconsciously, people have been repeating the word curiosity and uh, the reason, that is the simple reason, right? I think being a good di designer requires uh, a level of curiosity and, mm. and I myself personally believe that yeah. uh, learning, right, uh, for life is something you have to do and yeah. something that will lead you to good things and good opportunities. So uh, for those of you who are in the Zoom chat, if you want to stay around for a couple of minutes, hang out with Lillian, feel free to do so. But I'm going to sh stop the live share right now. So thank you for those who have been tuning in on Facebook. Thank you for participating. All right, and I'm going to end the... Uh, live sharing <laughs> and